Okay, so hello and welcome to this video tutorial for RC Hibbler's Engineering Mechanics Statics textbook. So we have this problem from chapter eight, which is asking a very wordy question. It's saying um, the car of a ma the car has a mass of one point six megagrams and a center of mass at G. If the coefficient of static friction between the shoulder of the road and the tires is 0.4, determine the greatest slope theta and uh, the, the the greatest slope theta the shoulder can have without causing the car to slip or tip over if the car travels along the shoulder at constant velocity. So, uh, and and we have this diagram here. Um, uh, so, like I say, it's quite a wordy question, but actually, it's it's a very simple question. Uh, once we break this 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 diagram down into a free body diagram. Let's start by doing that then. So what forces are acting on the car here? Well, uh, we have its weight acting down. Uh, it states in the question that the car has a mass of 1.6 megagrams, which is actually the first time I've seen that unit used unironically. Uh, let's convert it into a more convenient unit here. So we can say 1.6 megagrams is equal to 1,600 kilograms. Uh, and since it's 1,600 kilograms in mass, we can say it's 1,600 G in weight. Okay. Uh, what else is acting on the car? Well, we've got uh, the frictional force. Let's call it F for now, um, which is acting parallel to the road. And we've got the normal force uh, acting uh, between the car and the road here, let's call it N, um, which is acting perpendicular to the road here. Let's add some geometry to our free body diagram. So we can add a kind of horizontal axis in here, and we can say that this angle is theta. Uh, we can say that this is, is a right angle here. Um, and since we have a theta here, a right angle here, we can uh, say that this angle here is going to be uh, 90 minus theta. Okay, um, we almost have everything we need in our free body diagram. Uh, I, I said let's call this frictional force F for now. The reason I said that was because we understand, or I trust that you guys are familiar with this idea of uh, friction in this case being the product of the coefficient of static friction and the normal force. So I can kind of replace F here with uh, 0.4 N, 0.4 coming from the coefficient of static friction that's given in the problem there. Um, the reason I've done, done this is just so that we're working with one less um, unknowns, one fewer unknowns here. Okay, so let's go ahead and solve this then. Uh, since we're assuming that this system of forces is in equilibrium, we can say uh, that force is in the x direction, sum to zero. Therefore, the forces acting to the left are equal to the forces acting to the right. So what have we got acting to the left? Uh, looks like we have the kind of uh, uh, horizontal uh, component of this, this force n here. So that's going to take value of um, n cos uh, 90 minus theta. And uh, this is all equal to things acting to the right. So we've got the horizontal component of this 0.4 n force here. We could describe as 0.4 uh, n cos uh, of theta. Okay. Um, is this solvable? Well, uh, yes. Um, it may not look at first. You might think, Bertie, I've got two unknowns here, n and theta. Well, um, Note that if we divide both sides by n here, then the, the n's vanish, right? So if we divide both sides by n, uh, we're left with this this um, uh, th this idea here, where our only unknown here is theta. Um, I'm also going to introduce a new idea, which I've I've pasted down here. Um, this is a rule, in case you're unfamiliar, uh, uh, that um, sine and cos are effectively the same thing. It's just that they're translated 90 degrees from each other. Um, so where shall I put that? Let's just put that in, in, in the right here. So this, this cos 90 minus theta here, we can treat as um, sine theta. So we can say sine theta is equal to 0.4 cos of theta. Therefore, um, 
0.4 equals uh, sine theta over cos theta. And I'm going to trust that you guys recognize that that is nothing but uh, tan of theta. Okay. Uh, so we can say therefore, uh, uh, we can say therefore, uh, theta is equal to the inverse tan of uh, 0.4, which when I bung in my calculator uh, gives me a value of 21.8 degrees. Uh, and I believe that's everything that the question was asking for. It's just asking for, for the value of theta there. So um, we didn't even need to calculate the, the, the normal force here, which is nice. Um, if you have any questions or comments about this problem here, please feel free to leave them down in the comment section down below. Otherwise, thank you very much for watching.